Hello and welcome to Harv's World for episode 2 of the Pacific Northwest Born in Idaho Let's Play series. So in the first episode we were finishing up our own fields. That got done right now. Field 22 is planted with soybeans. We've got field 11 planted up with oats and field 12 is waiting to be harvested with grass. Those are in the very early stages, 22 and 11 are, so we don't have much to worry about. But, while I was planting them and finishing that up, I did realize that we were missing a piece of equipment, and that was going to be a weeder. We're going to need to get some weeds out of here, and that, you will note, is why our money has gone down just a little bit. So, we are at $90,027, which means we need to stop spending money and start earning some and I think the best way to do that's going to be a look and see what we've got out there for contracts. Well, there's some pretty good sized fields out there and I just want to see what our options are. Now we've got barley in field 25 for 8,000 and we've got oats in field 26 for 10,000. Now, we do not have big enough equipment to handle something like that. Because if you look at these fields, 25 and 26, these are massive fields. Just massive. And our little tiny field and our farms just doesn't have what it's going to take to get that done right now. Field 32 fertilizing, though, we could manage that. And that's going to pay us 16000 Field 32 is this big field right here. But we do have a 21 meter sprayer. Now that's not giant, but it would get the job done. And we do have plenty of liquid fertilizer. So I think we're going to start with that. I'm going to grab that contract. And I think we'll grab the Fent. The Fent should handle this. And I also want to grab the fence for another reason. I can put forks on the front of this and carry some extra fertilizer with me. Just to make sure we don't run out. Now where did I put those? There they are. grab our sprayer. I'm not sure. I think the sprayer is full. Nope. Not full at all. Let's see what these two tanks have in them. That's a full tank right there. So yeah, I think both of these tanks are going to be full. So, what we will do is go ahead and fill up. I'm going to fill up from the one... Oh, lift those things up, boy. I'm going to fill up from one and then take the other. so that we've got the full extra 2,000 liters to go with it. Uh, that'll give us 3,300 liters of liquid fertilizer. I think that should serve us pretty well. Again, this is a good size field, but it's not so massive that this sprayer won't handle it. Surely. And I know, stop calling you Shirley. front heavy. But we will get there.
And we just finished up the contract on field 32. Fertilizing is done. Let's uh, let's go refill if we can. I doubt we can because I did fill up once in the process already. We went through almost two complete tanks. That's uh, 2,600 liters. So if we look at our pallets, the fertilizer tank is 3,200. We used basically 2,200 liters. No, 2550. So that cost us roughly 4000 to uh, buy the fertilizer for the contract, but we are going to be paid 16000 So that's not a bad return on investment, four times what we spent. Collect that, and let's take a look at some more. What else have we got out there? I'm not too interested in anything smaller at the moment. We need to bring in real money. And again, there's those oats on field 26. Anything left over we can keep. It's 10,800. It's going to cost 1,700 to borrow the equipment. So we'd end up making about 9,000, a little bit less. Yeah, let's do that. Borrow the items. We'll run this tractor back up to the farm, and then we'll go see what we've got to work with. For times just like this, when we're struggling to get up a hill, now, I can honestly say I'm really pleased with how the this little fent is doing. So far, it has served us very well. Done exactly what we needed. No complaints. Okay, so we will bring this into the yard, park it up, and then bop on down to the store and see exactly uh, what they've uh, loaned us to work with. Okay, well we've got an Agco Ideal. Not in great shape though, geez. Almost 46 hours on it, and it has not been maintained. Now, this is exactly why I say maintain your vehicles. Keep them up. Who are we doing this contract for? Tyler Fleming. Tyler, buddy, you need to invest in a workshop. You need to talk to these guys at the store and, and uh, have them fix this thing up for you. Because I think this is really going to slow us down. And this is not a small harvest, obviously, since we have the the Agco that we're working with here. I'm going to tell you, I am not a big fan of header trailers. I very much like the the headers that come with the built-in trailers, but we'll see what we can do here. Hopefully that's on. That's one of the reasons I'm not such a big fan of header trailers, is simply because you can't always tell if they're locked into place or not. Alright, I'm going to have to move this tractor, otherwise we're going to end up wrecking it. Yeah, nice tractor, but again, long work hours and not much in the way of uh, maintenance. Tyler, you and I are going to have words, buddy.
Although the tractor just pulling a trailer around is not going to be as big a deal as our harvester. So we'll get that cover off. Get our four ways on. This is a fabulous interior, I have to say. It's going to be a comfy ride, but it better be because I think it's going to be a slow ride. Apparently I did get that header on the trailer right. It seems to be following us around just uh, just fine. At least I haven't heard anything fall off. away we go. Contract complete. I actually dumped a little more than I needed to, but we still have 15,466 liters in the trailer. I think there's about 2,000 left in the harvester. So yeah, we're going to end up with uh, 17, 18,000 liters of oats that we could sell off or hang on to. I don't think the oat price is very good right now. It's a couple hundred dollars short from what I'd like to see, so I think we'll probably hang on to it. Just sit back over here, take the rest of those oats out of the harvester, and then we'll look into our baling equipment. Seventeen thousand six seventy eight, not too shabby. figure on a good day I'm looking at the oat prices right now even if we did sell them right now you know we'd be looking at about another 18 grand on top of our contract and our contract is worth 9,000 so that's gonna make make for a good day
So, contracts. Contracts. I was on contracts, silly. And we've got a lot of smaller ones. We've got barley in field 25. Needs to go to the restaurant again. That's right down there where we were. Slightly smaller field, but again, it pays off pretty well. What's barley going for right now? 664. A little less than what I would uh, hope for, but that is the best contract at the moment. Oh, field 31 is corn. Going to the bakery. If we were to do corn, what's corn selling for right now? 855 at Agro Wholesales. He wants to sell at the bakery for 677. Well, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but it pays the same. 12.2 acres versus 12.43. This is field 31. Yeah, let's do the corn. Let's do the corn. Looks pretty good. And we are again going to borrow items, so let me grab those. Hop down to the store. We've got the Russell Mash 161. I do like their equipment quite a bit. It's got a lot of hours on it, but it's a little better maintained than the last one, so I can't complain about that. Got a bigger trailer this time. Can't complain about that. Let's get this stuff over to 131 and take some corn. And I've talked about the fact that this is the, the first time I've ever done anything like this. And I have watched quite a few YouTubers and they're all very good. They've obviously been doing this for a long time. They know what they're doing. And when I first started thinking about creating some videos like this, you know, my my I started thinking about this map in particular. I knew I wanted to play it quite a bit. And the stuff I had seen from other guys and I was, you know, coming up with all these elaborate scenarios and and role-playing and storylines and all of that stuff and then I realized well that's all well and good but you've never even recorded a video before so why don't you just focus on the gameplay passing along some information and learning something before you make it even more difficult on yourself so that's what I'm doing now you know I'm just playing the game something that I love to do and I decided to share with with anybody who wants to look at it but, I do want to say one thing. When I first started playing the game, and I needed more information, there was one guy that I, I found that was really, really good, and that I enjoyed quite a bit. And he was one of those guys who came up with elaborate scenarios, and His name was Jim Bob, and his channel is Jim Bob Plays Games, if you want to check it out. And while he was going on, at, at one point he had reached 10,000 subscribers. And he was pretty excited about that, and he was, you know, saying thank you to everybody, and, and started talking about himself a little bit, and mentioned the fact that gaming was his social outlet that that YouTube had become his social outlet because he had a lot of struggles with depression he was dealing with some some other uh, other health issues that he was trying to manage um, 
autism primarily was was what he was working toward although you couldn't tell it just by listening to him but obviously there was there was something going on there anyway you know that that kind of really struck a chord with me and, and I thought he was really great at what he did at what he had posted I really enjoyed listening to his storylines and and learning some more about playing the game just by watching what he was working toward and I got to the end of his most recent one I didn't realize this at the time but just about a year ago he kinda dropped off the face of the earth now this was a guy who had Facebook and Twitter and all of the social media accounts and was regularly posting and posting videos and all of a sudden everything just completely stopped and ever since then I've, I've worried that he's okay that he's out there somewhere and and that he just got fed up one day and said well this isn't what I want to do and decided to move on and but mostly I just hope he's okay that he's he's found some peace in life and is doing something new and interesting to occupy his time so with all of that said that's kinda what inspired me to start doing this but you know if, if somebody who has struggles like that can get out and put himself out there take the risk whatever risk is involved and have some fun with it I respect that and Jim Bob if you are out there somewhere and if for some strange reason you should stumble across my video and start watching it um, you are you are the inspiration for this and you help to give me the courage to uh, to even try so thanks and with all of that said I am gonna get this contract done and we will see you at that point
Okay, so I am just finishing up the, the harvest on field 31, this corn harvest. This small header did not make the job easy. took quite a long time. And I have not turned in a single kernel of corn yet. I have not sold anything off. And I have a couple of reasons for that, and I'll tell you why. Now, I did have to take a load over. But I realized something as I was moving through this field. Is just over there, you can see it through those trees, is the port grain silo. And the port grain silo has just become my friend. So I took a load over and dropped it there. We've got a a million liters of storage there that we can use whenever we want and so this trailer holds 45,000 that's going to give us a grand total of about 73,000 now if I look at the contract at the moment we are 84 con percent complete and have not turned in a single kernel of corn that means we should have a decent amount left over that we can sell and I'm definitely going to sell this I want to get the cash in our pocket but I'm going to stop by there first I'm going to top off this trailer and then I will show you the other reason that I wanted to use the pork grain silo because it's going to help us out significantly. So here's the drop off point. I'm just pulling through here. And I don't know why I just unloaded because what I wanted to do was load. Oh well that's okay. We will just pull back out and load back up as soon as I can find the reload point. It is not over here. I'm guessing it must be right under this. Yes. Corn, 72,523. So we'll load up with 45,000. We'll see how much the bakery, taking this to the bakery, how much corn that's going to, how much they're going to take to complete this contract. And then we're going to see about selling off the rest. And one thing that I know at this point is that corn, the best price is at timber line flour mill at 819 that's not too shabby even though they're there they want to sell at the bakery for 677 that's his business I don't care it doesn't affect me in any way but we will sell our corn at the timber line flour mill and I don't want to go this way can I get out I can definitely cut across, it just depends on whether traffic stops me or not. No. We could have gone that way. It just would have been a little more windy and had to circle back around to get to where we need to go. This is a direct route. This will take us straight into the bakery. Now I am really slowly going to tip this in. We're at 
There we go. And we've got 20,000 liters left over. I'll take that. I'll take that all day long. I'll get back across this road. And we are going back to the Port Green Silo. to unload again. Right back into the silo. And now I can collect this contract because we are done for all that work we only made sixty eight hundred dollars that took a long time not completely sure it was worth it but you know what I'm not gonna complain either so what I really want to figure out and doing that contract gives me the benefit of uh, doing exactly that is how to utilize the train. So the map maker specifically Epides says the train can be utilized to move harvest from down here in the valley up onto the bench. If we look at our map we can see Timberline Flour Mill right there. We're down here at the Port Silo but this yellow line is the train tracks and we know the train is going to go right through the Timberline flour mill. So we should be able to put that corn on the train, run it up there and sell it off. Now we just have to catch the train. And I have trains turned off at the moment. Let's turn on switch to trains. Do a quick save. And there we go. Now, if we look back on our train, looks like that first car is probably a grain car. The second one definitely should carry grain, right? We're going to find out. It's got a belly dump on it, looks like. And we should be coming right down into... the pork green silo here in any minute. Well, it takes a long time to stop that train. <laughs> when it's rolling. And granted, it would take a long time to stop a train when it's rolling. But I think if we line up... right about... there... we can fill with corn. So we are going to dump our corn into this train and that will carry a lot of corn. 20,000 is only 16 percent. And we're hauling corn with the train, all right.
Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm a little bit of a train buff. I like the older steam engines and things like that, but trains in general kind of turn my crank a little bit. Um, so the fact that, you know, when there is a train on the map and you get to drive it, that's kind of a kind of fun for me. I enjoy that. And the fact that we can utilize it in our, our farm work here makes it even that much better. So I really hope I put that corn in the right car. But we'll find out. And this will give us a chance to see a little bit more of the map. We haven't been up in this section yet. And coming up here, we've got the the agro agro wholesales right there on the corner. We'll be utilizing that in the future for sure. Oh, there's one nice big field up here. And up here on the left is a, a tree nursery. That could come into our benefit at some point too, maybe. If we're uh, going to do some forestry, that might be the place to look into it. Those trees are all nice and straight and pretty. Now, unless I'm mistaken, we should be coming up on our destination. Is this our flour mill? Let's double check the map and make sure. No, this is the north silo. And we can also use the north silo for storage, too. So... And we could have uh, we could have dropped our corn there, but we're not going to. We're going to move on to the next spot, next stop on our rail journey. And that's right up here. And once again, I'm moving too fast. Well, at least I know one thing for sure, and that is we can dump the corn. Because I saw the marker pop up as we passed over. So we'll back into the station. And we uh, went over the, the dump. There we go. Stop, stop, stop. And we're going to dump our corn. How much are we going to make from this? 16,634. So all told we made about 22,000. Not too shabby. And with that we are going to end this episode. I know it was all uh, contract work, but it needed to be done. We needed to get some money in the bank. Or at least in our wallet. And uh, I appreciate you watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did. And we will see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.